Welcome to Kivotos, my fellow senseis, and this is Blue Archive. A game which will make you laugh. A game that will make you cry due to its cute and funny cast. And of course, get put on the FBI watch list yet again because the entire cast is actually between the ages of 15 to 17, except for Kayoko and probably a couple of others. And of course, the only things I knew about the game before I actually played this game was California Girls, Aru being a dumbass as always, slapping a piece of cheese on Mutsuki's face, and Kisaki is the queen of Kani. Also, Holy shit you guys, why is there so much porn? The story of Blue Archive tosses you into the shoes of an unnamed sensei as an advisor to the various students populating the city of Kivatos, with multiple schools with different themes. The Devil Girls come from Gehenna, the Tech Girls come from Millennium, Trinity is for the Angels, and Abydos for the... Crippling... Dead? Of course, there is Hyakiyako, Shanghai Jin, and Red Winter that get fleshed out later on in events and in the main story once you get far enough and plenty more. To avoid the long story, I'll summarize everything in one second. Box Girls, and Funny Mustache Umu that calls you Comrade. Is that a fing tank? The main story section is broken into chapters where the first story chapter covers the struggles of the foreclosure task force to earn money to pay back their debts to keep the part desert school. I don't like sand. All while they're being hassled by Problem Solver 68, a villainous organization led by Riku Hachima Aru, the biggest dork of the entire game, and is one of my favorite characters in the game. Every time I roll, I get spooked by everyone else but Aru. I've even changed my sensei's name to Aru. Uh, whenever I roll, I write Aru, please, in the hopes she would come home someday. But until then, I guess Hina will have to do. And back to the story, apart from the literal war zone occurring outside of the streets of Kivatos, it really just is an ordinary day of normal high school girls doing ordinary things as they plot to kidnap other school students to increase their student numbers, hiring bad guys to invade a school who clock out as soon as they run out of funds, and of course, um, robbing a bank at gunpoint in 5 minutes. Man, high school girls are metal as shit these days, aren't they? I'm so blaming TikTok for that. I like most of the gacha games, this main story will leave you rolling on the floor laughing, just as much as the side stories in this game that detail the daily lives of the various clubs from the different schools, which are definitely my favourite part of the game. There might be a skip button here too because I seem to keep noting this is a feature due to how traumatised I am by the lack of one in Honkai Star Rail and Genshin, but take your time to read everything in Blue Archive if you enjoy slice of life moments. It's arguably got one of the best stories I've ever seen in a gacha game since Fate Grand Order and you will definitely be missing out a lot if you skip. And now comes the part where I summarize the gameplay in a few seconds, which involves watching your little chibi units duke it out with enemy students, robots, and of course, massive bosses. That's quite big. I swear you can spend hours just watching them run across the screen and firing at enemies. And to turn the tides of the battle, you can even use the unique skills of each student to show up in groups of three with shared energy that recharges over time. Most of the game is spent running the big hexagonal maps as efficiently as possible to get three stars, so that you can then skip the battles entirely and farm for your account level so you can actually increase the level cap of your units to clear higher level areas in about 5 minutes per day. And that's basically the entire game loop. To make things even better, as you level up from a new player's perspective, more areas will start to open up to you from bounties to gather skill materials, the cafe that you can furnish with items that you can craft in the crafting room, and train your students in lessons around the different campuses in the game. There's also plenty of other challenges like joy firing drills, raid shadow I mean raid total assault, and all these magical blacked out boxes that I can't open because I'm stuck at chapter 5 since I want to 3 star everything on my first try so I don't actually have to run the maps again. Because even with an auto battle function, they take ages to run. And what better for grinding than to have strong SSR units in a gacha game? SSRs in this game are the 3-star units, and the gacha is actually pretty damn generous with its 3% SSR rate with a hard pity of 200 rolls, with the ability to choose literally whoever you want for pity. And before you go gem happy on the banners though, just make sure there's no units you absolutely want to save for in future banners like myself, because the game's unfortunately not quite as generous with its free gems, and any remaining pity on the banner turns into f***ing rocks. Not to be mistaken for boulders, my fellow senseis. Rocks. Like the pioneers rode for miles on, except they're used in crafting. 
While I was rolling for my Dork Goddess Aru as I mentioned earlier, I rolled about 160 pity on the first banner that I ever found and had to spend a little bit to top up the hit pity because I had one day left on the banner. So by all means, please do not waste your story gems as a new F2P player. Just roll a couple of SSRs to carry you through the game, save up to 200 rolls before you roll, and look up the wiki for upcoming limited characters like the New Year characters. Or in my case, I should have just saved up for New Year Aru, because getting the alternative New Year Aru is better than no Aru at all. Duplicate units or anything you can get from the gacha gives LFs that you can only trade in for units that you own, and if you can't get a specific unit, you'll even eventually be able to farm them from the hard levels, a bit like Azure Lane. We must stay focused, brothers. Except most of the worthwhile units are somewhere around the much later stages, around stage 15 or 16 of the main mission, so sometimes earlier. Also, who named all of these things in the shop anyway? Enigma? Woof, sick. I swear whoever named it got fired because they did it for the memes when they were still in fashion back when the game went global or something a few years back. I still find them funny though, so if you disagree, you can Enigma Ball. The best part of the game is raising the affection levels of your units by giving gifts to them and teaching them in lessons, which gives unique cutscenes with each character as you interact with them. All your efforts will soon materialize into a fully animated live 2D scene of the character once you hit a specific affection level for a specific character. I leveled up Hina's affection to 10 first because she was my second SSR that I run everything on and she's just a really cool character in general as you'll find out throughout the story. Even if the live 2D scenes like Hina's would prompt the FBI to fly right through your freaking window. The only thing you can do with the live 2D models is simply to head pat your students. And since the base models lack the head patting capabilities and I enjoy head patting Aruna every chance I get, I just had to get my hands on the live 2D models for all my favorite girls and of course, we must definitely protect that smile, my fellow command, I mean Shikika, I mean Sensei, or is it Master? Nah, I'm kidding. And this now brings me to the verdict of Blue Archive. Yes, Blue Archive. It's a very solid 9 out of 10 for me. Blue Archive might not be as generous with their free gems or pity as most other games are in the long term, but if you save up your early game gems for the characters that you want, it really is not a problem for the average free-to-play player to stay F2P. Furthermore, watching your adorable chibi characters shooting enemies on the screen is honestly pretty satisfying despite the grindy nature, while boasting a strong character-driven narrative that keeps you entertained all the way. It never really gets old especially when things do hit the fan much later on. And that is all I have on Blue Archive. It's a truly cute and funny game that is well worth playing. And as far as gacha games go, Blue Archive is definitely on my highly recommended list of gacha games. Just be prepared to end off the FBI if you didn't come here for hit pads like I did, and came here simply because of all the hentai. And as always, stay safe, stay humble. And remember to hit Pat Arona on the way to all your missions, the shopkeeper, life duty models, and everyone else, because they all deserve the hit pats. This is the Annie Knight, and we will see you next time. <laughs>